Hello everyone, welcome to our second tutorials. Uh, SP will be online classes for uh, NCRT 10th standard and CBSC 10th standard. And hearty welcome to physics. We are starting today. So, mathematics 24 sessions are over. So, we are uh, starting today's class with uh, physics. So, it will be followed by a chemistry class also in the coming days. In a few days, we are going to start it. So in the CBSE 10th standard or the NCRT 10th standard physics, we have uh, five very important chapters. One is uh, electricity, which is theoretically as well as it is the problem based, that is numerical based uh, chapter. Next comes the magnetic effect of electric current, a very important uh, chapter again. Then comes sources of energy, where you can a little bit relax in physics. Then comes the most very important chapter, that is light. So it's a very important chapter. Most of the students uh, love the concept of uh, light in this chapter. They enjoy it. We, have, we, are, we are also going to come across the numericals uh, on uh, light chapter, which, are, which is very important. It's a little bit big chapter and very important for your exams. The maximum marks in physics you are going to get in uh, uh, the exams. Right? So next comes the other uh, last chapter that is human eye and uh, colorful world. So it's uh, also uh, a reflection of light, some properties of uh, light is also followed in that uh, particular chapter that is human eye and colorful world. So then we will go with the uh, concept today, we are we'll be starting with uh, light. So in this light chapter we are going to study regarding uh, the properties of light. So here in this uh, light chapter the very important thing is we are studying in 10th standard the uh, light chapter we will be studying only ray optics in the sense we are going to consider that light is light travels in straight lines ray optics that's what uh, I am discussing now. So the higher order of uh, light, uh, light we are going to discuss in the means you are going to study in your higher classes that is in your uh, uh, 12th standard classes. So here we will be studying only the two very important uh, properties of light that is reflection and refraction. So these are the only two properties we are going to study. So at the beginning of the chapter you will be coming across the plane mirror, the properties of uh, plane mirror, how the image forms on a plane mirror, right? Uh, and the second thing is we go with the mirrors, types of mirrors convex mirrors and uh, we go with concave mirrors we are going to draw some ray diagrams connected to concave mirrors and some ray diagrams connected to convex mirrors we are going to study regarding the, their optic centers, center of curvatures then focus, we are going to come across the lens formula there uh, very important uh, numerical problems you are going to solve on uh, the image formation of uh, mirrors and then we come for refraction so there you are going to study regarding the types of lenses uh, in that lenses you are going to come across again convex lenses and concave lenses so in those lenses you are, regarding lenses you are going to draw certain ray diagrams how the images are formed when the object distance varies from the lenses uh, uses of uh, uh, mirrors and lenses usually you study that and also including that we are going to do some numerical problems on uh, the uh, lenses and at last we come for the uh, power of the, the lenses uh, and accommodation all those things also comes in this chapter but it is more discussed in the human eye and colorful world chapter. So in this chapter first of all we will learn the theoretical background of uh, the chapter here is very 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 important because from ancient times the scientists that is physicists were uh, very very particular about the properties of light how this light is made up of how the light comes out of a body and uh, uh, many things related to that so one by one i'm going to discuss the theoretical background of light let us learn the history of light and then we'll come to the chapter so here there is a lot of uh, there was a lot of speculation how light what by what light is made up of so whether uh, it is in the form of a wave or it is in the form of a particle so all those uh, speculations were there so many scientists worked on the work to understand 
did a lot of uh, experiments to understand the real properties of light. So, at that time, we were knowing only certain things. So, what is light basically? So, basically, light is a form of energy. It's a form of energy. So, it gives us a sense of vision to us. So, when if light is there in the room, we can see the things. If we, we are present in a dark room where no light is there, we cannot see the things. So, just you have eyes, that's not enough for uh, uh, seeing the objects or looking at the objects. We need light also. So, what, what is the scientific thing behind uh, how we look at the things, how the things are visible to us? So, it's very simple. There are there, there should be a source of light. If you want to see certain objects, we need a source of light. So, what is source of light means? Here, an object should be able to produce its own light. For example, the sun. When you see, we can see the sun because it, is, it gives out its own light to us. So, that's one thing. Second thing is, when the light coming out of these sources of light, when they fall on certain other objects, those particular light rays are going to get reflected after falling on the object and they enter into our eyes. So, then we are able to see the object that is the persistence of vision. So, our eyes is, is able to see uh, certain electromagnetic radiations that is uh, a type of radiation which consists of uh, both electric and magnetic fields which are uh, oscillating perpendicular to each other and they travel at the speed of light. So, they are called as electromagnetic uh, radiations. They have their own properties. So, among the electromagnetic radiations, first radiation comes that is radio waves. Then we can go with the next uh, electromagnetic radiation is with a certain little bit higher frequency is microwaves. Then we go with light. Then third one, fourth one is we go for ultraviolet uh, radiations. Then we go with X-rays. Then we go with uh, gamma radiations. So all these type of radiations are called electromagnetic radiations. So these electromagnetic among these electromagnetic radiations, a very narrow range of electromagnetic radiations is the light. So in that light we have Vibrio, that is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So this is a very narrow range of uh, uh, wavelength of electromagnetic radiations our uh, eyes is able to see. Right? So, when the X-rays fall on our eyes, we cannot see that. When radio waves fall on our eyes, we cannot see that. So, our eyes is made to see only type of electromagnetic radiations having the wavelength 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters to 8 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters. So, only this narrow range of electromagnetic radiations are visible to us and those electromagnetic radiations which are visible to us, we, we call it as light. So, a body should give out light that, that's called a luminous body and the body uh, which reflects the light falling on it or it, which uh, scatters the light which is falling on it are called as non-luminous objects. For example, sun is a luminous object, an electric bulb is a luminous object, a candle is a luminous object when it is lit. So, a hot iron, uh, red hot iron when it is a luminous object because it starts giving out the light. So, many examples I can give you. So, non-luminous objects means those objects which do not give out their own light, but they can scatter the light or they can reflect the light which is made to fall on it. So, they are called as non-luminous objects. Okay. Let us go with the, the very important other things related to light. So, I, I, I welcome to welcome you again to chapter uh, to this chapter that is light. So next is how we see the objects around us, right? So just now I told you objects which emit their own light are called as luminous objects, and uh, the objects which do not emit their own light but reflect or scatter the light which is falling on the objects are called as non-luminous objects. That's that's a very important definition. So here, when we see the things, what happens? That's the, the scientific uh, thing behind it. When we see an object, for example, when you are uh, seeing a rose plant, light from the sun falls on it, falls on the rose plant, the rose, uh, rose is going to reflect the light, that reflected light is going to enter into our eyes. So inside the eyes we have the 
uh, retina so when the light falls on the retina so we can uh, those the rods and cones present on the retina are going to convert those light into corresponding electrical signals and those electrical signals are transported to our brain through the uh, certain nerves that is the, those objects those images when they travel to our brain the brain is going to convert the corresponding signals into images and, and we, can, we are able to perceive those images and we can see those images so that's the scientific background behind them how we can see an object so here is a simple uh, thing so sunlight uh, coming and falling on the flower the flower reflects the sunlight in all directions so it is going to get reflected and certain a part of the reflected uh, light rays are going to enter into our eyes so at this moment we are able to see this particular flower so this is how the vision in human beings happen so this is the scientific reason behind the uh, that is how we see the objects around us so as i told you earlier so light is a big speculation even today we exactly do not know what light is made up of so from the ancient times our physicists largely a lot of uh, at least a lot of uh, experiments and uh, to analyze the exact nature of uh, light so among them two predominant uh, theories regarding light is uh, still known to us so we follow that among them one is the Huygens wave theory and Newton's corpuscular theory. So here we go with the first time we go with Newton's corpuscular theory. So according to Newton, according to his experiments, according to Newton, light is made up of very small tiny particles which are called carpuscles. We call it as carpuscles. So light is made up of very tiny particles called as carpuscles, and these carpuscles are having the capacity of traveling at a very high speeds reaching the speeds up to 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second so that's the speed of light what we have today so according to newton those particles which are called as carpus carpuscles when they fall on certain objects they are going to get rebounded when they travel from uh, one uh, uh, medium to another medium they are going to change its uh, direction those carpuscles are responsible for the shadows to happen so these are the uh, this, these things were uh, proved by Newton by using his corpuscular theory of light. So at the other end of uh, the other end of this light, we have the Huygens wave theory. So according to Huygens wave theory, uh, light is made up of uh, not corpuscles or not particles. It is exactly made up of waves. So these those waves I am going to call it as Huygens calls it as electromagnetic uh, radiations or electromagnetic waves. So let us, I will give you a small glimpse what is an electromagnetic wave. A wave which consists of electric fields as well as magnetic fields. So you consider this as the graph, a very simple graph. So in the graph you will be having an electric field and also you will be having the magnetic field which will be oscillating exactly perpendicular to each other. Both the fields will be oscillating perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the direction of propagation at the speed of 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second so that is these electromagnetic waves that is light is made up of such type of uh, electric fields and magnetic fields so the light is a transverse wave so these were the uh, things given by Huygens so there was a lot of uh, difference between Huygens and uh, Newton because Newton called the light to be made up of small, uh, small particles called uh, carpuscles whereas Huygens calls light is not made up of tiny particles called carpuscles but they are made up of uh, electromagnetic radiations right so in these uh, speculations both theories were correct because light exhibits certain properties so among uh, some six some six very important properties three out of six three out of six properties were well defined by newton by using his corpuscular theory of light but failed to define the other three properties. So Huygens considering that light is in the form of waves uh, proves that the first three properties of uh, light but he fails to prove the other three properties of light which was proved by, proved correct by Newton. So uh, Newton and Huygens both were correct in their own fields. So according to 
high units, wave theory of light, diffraction, interference, and polarization. These are the three properties of light: diffraction, interference, and polarization. These are the three properties of light which he, he was able to prove that light is in the form of waves. So, if you imagine that, if you consider that light is in the form of waves, you can satisfactorily define diffraction, interference, and polarization. If you, on the other hand, if you consider that light is in the form of corpuscles according to Newton's corpuscular theory, you can successfully define through experiments reflection, refraction, and casting of shadows by corpuscular theory of light. So, both are correct in their own ways. So here, if you consider that uh, Newton's corpuscular theory you, uh, as, as the light is made up of particles, you cannot define these three things. You cannot define these three phenomena of properties of light. So if you take light as uh, in the light in the form of waves, you cannot define these things. That is reflection, refraction and casting of shadows. So if you imagine that light is in the form of waves, three properties can be defined. If you consider that light is in the form of uh, particles or corpuscles, uh, these three properties can be proved. Right? So here, overall one thing happened there, we have evidence, we have, we got some evidence that light waves, the waves nature, for the wave nature of light we have evidence and the particle nature of light also we have evidence. So in the sense, light appears to be uh, exhibiting the properties of uh, a particle nature and also it is exhibiting the property of a wave nature. So that means light has dual nature. Right. So keeping this in mind, Planck, Max Planck, he does more investigations, more experiments on light and comes out with the modern theory of light, a modern theory of light, what uh, we study nowadays and now in uh, recent years we are studying that. That's called Planck's quantum theory, right? So according to Planck's quantum theory, light is made up of very small, tiny particles called quanta. So the, these quantas are a small packet of energy, and the energy carried by these quantas, right, depends upon the frequency of that type of radiation. For example, if you take uh, a radio wave and if you take uh, a gamma radiation both are totally different electromagnetic waves both are electromagnetic waves but they are totally different with respect to their frequencies so here radio waves has this frequency and uh, gamma rays are rays have very high frequency in the sense frequency more the frequency more the energy they can carry more penetration power they have that's the meaning that's that we can consider that so radio wave is an electromagnetic wave having less frequency, uh, gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave having very high frequency but both are made up of quantas and these quantas differ from one another with respect to their energy. So radio, a radio wave having uh, a quanta will carry very less, very less energy inside it because it has less frequency. So at the other hand, gamma radiation has very high frequency therefore those quantas which are in the gamma radiations carry very high energy so in between these two we have light so light is also made up of uh, as it is an electromagnetic radiation according to Planck's quantum theory of light light is not also made up of small tiny particles called quantas so especially as the quantas in light they are called as photons they are called as photons. So this is the theory what we are studying that. So if you in light, if you want to study a particular phenomena, uh, particular phenomena, you have to consider, for example, if you have to study diffraction, then you have to consider that light is in the form of waves. If you want to study refraction, then you have to consider that light is in the form of particles. So if you want to study the photoelectric effect, then you have to consider that light is in the form of uh, small packets of energy called quantas. So photoelectric effect is also one of the effect of light. So that, that is something like uh, whenever certain electromagnetic radiations including light starting from uh, radio waves to gamma radiations, if they are made to follow certain materials, uh, the electrons that is the atom on the surface of those materials are going to emit electrons out. They are going to emit electrons. 
So this phenomenon is known as uh, that is photoelectric effect or uh, maybe you can also call it as black body radiations. So if you want to study those things you have to consider that light is in the form of small particles called quantas. So there is a lot of discrepancy regarding light. Today, even today we do not know the exact nature of light. So if you are studying something, consider light as something. If you are studying some other thing, consider light some as some other nature. Then you have to go with the light. Right? So next. Next we will go with the very important uh, properties of light one by one. So among them, one is the effects of material on light. So here we are going to study when light is made to fall on certain materials, right? How the materials behave with light. What is the effect of light on those materials? So next we go with the reflection. Next we go with refraction. Next is dispersion. We'll go with that. Total internal reflection, interference, diffraction, scattering of light, and polarization. So one by one, we will study the properties of light now. Okay. So here, let us go with the effects of material on light. So materials can be classified uh, based on how it, uh, how it behaves or it res responds when light is made to fall on it. So among them, one is the opaque materials. Opaque, opaque in the sense, whenever light is made to fall on these materials, it won't, these materials do not allow the light to pass through them. They are called as opaque materials. See, I am an opaque, I am an opaque to light. I am opaque to light. This wall is uh, opaque to light. A book is opaque to light. Right? So, those materials which do not allow light to pass through them, they are called as uh, opaque materials. So, then we come up with transparent materials. So, these materials, when, when light is made to fall on these, trans these materials, they completely allow the light to pass through them. So therefore they are called as transparent materials, right? For example, glass is a transparent material. So whenever light is made to fall on a glass slab, in the sense a very thin glass slab, easily the light rays are going to pass through it. So they are called as transparent materials, right? So next is transfluid materials, transfluid materials. So here, whenever light is made to fall, made to pass through or fall on these materials, the light rays pass through it, but a, a maximum percentage of uh, light rays are going to get distorted in the sense that they are going to change their directions uh, or the light rays are going to get disturbed. So here transfluent is a little bit uh, different from transparent materials. So once again those materials which do not allow light to pass through them are called as opaque materials. Those materials which allow completely allow the light to pass through them are called as transparent materials and those materials when when the light is made to pass through them the part of the light rays are distorted by these uh, materials they are called as transfluent materials next we go with another very important property of light that is reflection which is in your uh, entire uh, light chapter we are going to study regarding plane mirrors concave mirrors and convex mirrors so in all the three uh, these optic, uh, optical things, we are going to study the reflection, how it happens uh, by studying certain rules, uh, how images, before studying images, we have to study certain rules, I will, I, will, I will be going with that in the coming classes, so we will go with the rules then, then we will study the properties of concave, convex and uh, blend mirrors. So, basically in your, uh, in your lower classes, in your earlier classes, you have studied regarding this, so one is, when light is made to fall on certain smooth surface, the light bounces back to the same medium again. Just like when you throw a ball to the wall, the ball is going to get bounced back to your hands again. So this is what we call reflection. So here whenever light is made to fall on certain smooth surfaces, it should be smooth because if you want to observe the reflection happening there 100%, then the surface of the material should be smooth, that is soft it should not be a rough surface, that's the meaning. So whenever light is made to fall on certain smooth, soft surfaces, soft in the sense, don't give it the some other meaning, whose surface is uh, not soft in the sense, it's not by touching soft or not, not like that, it should not be a rough surface, that's all, just like glass or uh, the surface of a metal, 
that's that's my meaning of a smooth surface right so when our light is going to fall on certain materials the light is going to hit the material and again bounce back to the same material so this is the material light rays enters from one medium falls on the material and if it bounces back to the same medium again then this property this phenomenon of light is known as reflection of light so among uh, reflection so here we are given a ray diagram of how reflection happens so this is the light ray falling on this uh, smooth surface this is uh, the light ray which is coming towards the or which is coming towards the surface of the material is called as the incident light ray here at this point the reflection is happening and is get, getting reflected and it is uh, going it is bouncing back to the same medium right so we have drawn a normal a normal is a line on which is drawn uh, uh, perpendicular to the surface of the material so so this is the the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence we have studied, studied that and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray that is called as angle of reflection so here usually in your eighth standard physics you have come across this the angle of incidence is indicated by i and angle of reflection is indicated by r so angle of incidence will be always equal to the angle of reflection so it is one of the laws of reflection so here reflection happens in two different ways one is uh, uh, regular refle reflection another is irregular reflection so regular reflection can also can, can be called as specular reflection and irregular reflection can be called as diffuse reflection so here in a regular reflection the light rays they are incident on a material and they get bounced back to the same medium here you can see the parallel light rays falling on it and after reflection also the light rays are parallel to each other that means they maintain a constant distance between them so here here what what's happening the light rays are falling parallel to the that is a beam of light rays are falling parallel that is which are parallel to each other falling on the surface and after reflection the light rays are have been distorted in the sense they are moving away in all different uh, possible directions because the surface of this material is not smooth so when light is made to fall on a smooth surface the regular reflection happens and the light rays are going to fall on a rough surface irregular reflection happens so regarding reflection we will study more in this chapter in the coming days next is refraction of light it is a very important uh, phenomenon and maybe in your age science physics you have across this again so what happens here is consider two mediums one is uh, for example this is the barrier uh, above this is one medium above below this is one medium for example we we'll consider this as air and we we'll consider this as water so when if a light rays comes from the air and enters into water or it comes from air and enters into glass then the direction of the light ray at the reflecting that is surface the line which separates the two medium at that line the direction of the light ray is going to change in the sense the light ray is going to change its direction so whenever a light ray travels from one medium to another medium then we can see a change in its direction so this phenomenon of light is known as ref refraction of light so many students ask me sir what is the meaning of the word ref phenomenon so phenomenon is an effect or cause of an object where the effect or cause of that uh, thing, what is what is what it is happening there, is in question. Is in is in question still. We do not know the exact thing. What is happening there? That's called a phenomenon. So here, refraction is also a phenomenon of uh, light. So whenever light travels from one medium to another medium, then we can see it, a change in the direction of the light ray. So this phenomenon of light is known as refraction of light. So here you can see is the incident light ray this is the line which separates the two media you can take it as A and you can take it as water here so whenever the light ray enters from the one medium at this point it is going to get refracted when you draw a normal at the point of incidence then you can see that this is the <coughs> original part of the light ray this is the original part of the light ray but you can see that the light ray has bent towards the normal, it has bent towards the normal 
So in the sense, the light ray has changed its, its direction. So this phenomenon happens in two different uh, scenarios, two different criteria. So in the coming class, I will discuss the criteria also. So you can see here, the light ray is going to change its direction. In the sense, it is bending towards the normal. So here, the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. And the angle between the, that is this angle, the angle between the uh, refracted ray, this is called refracted ray, this is the incident ray. The angle between the refracted ray and the normal is called the angle of refraction. So here, we should, we should not guess that, sir, both angles will be equal. If it cannot be equal, the angle of incidence will be totally different from the angle of refraction and the light is drawn from one medium to another medium. So it will be a change in that. So why change in that? What happens? The, what is the scientific reason behind that? So we will study in the coming classes. Okay. So we go with the dispersion of light. So it was uh, the, new, the contribution of Newton uh, is uh, discussed in this dispersion of light. So in the olden days when the kings used to have diamonds in their uh, uh, rings, when it was when the particular diamond was placed in the sunlight, uh, seven pillars used to come out of that diamond. So people in olden days used to think that uh, okay, when uh, sunlight is made to uh, fall on a diamond, the diamond is going to absorb all the uh, that is white light, that is sunlight, and convert that into seven pillars and distribute that out. So that was the uh, belief what we had. But Newton came and uh, we used the prisms, particular type of uh, design materials, prisms which are, which are having certain refractive indices. indices. So he, when he passed the light through a prism, uh, the white light as it, as, it, as it enters into the prism, it is going to get dispersed. In the sense, white light is a bundle of seven pillars. So if you take seven, six, seven different uh, subjects, subject books, Put it in a bundle, then then it, it can be called as a white light ray. So a white light ray has inside it seven different colors. So when this white light enters into the prism, then the white light, as the prism offers, the prism is made up of certain uh, material that is called as a lead glass. That the prism is made up of a lead glass. So as as the white light ray enters into the prism, this prism offers different refractive indices for different colors. So depending upon the different refractive indices for different colors, the colors are going to bend in, in particular angle, at a particular angle. This is nothing but refraction in a particular angle and these light rays are going to come out as seven beautiful colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, you can see that if you place a screen here, you, get, you can get all the seven colors on it. So this is what we call Dispersion. So, the phenomenon of splitting up of a white composite line into its constituent colors can be called as dispersion. The dispersion uh, was uh, the dispersion of light was uh, discovered by our uh, very famous scientist that is Isaac Newton. Okay. So, this is another property of uh, light that is total internal reflection. So, here what happens here? Consider this as a medium, for example, this is water medium. So here is a source of uh, light. Inside the water, we have a source of light. So we will uh, put, our, put it on, for example, inside the water, we have a torch here. We will put on the torch. The light ray starts coming out of the torch and it starts moving in different, different directions. So consider some two rays. So here, one of the ray travels inside the water and reaches the light separate in the two media. So here, it's the particular light ray is going to uh, swim, that is, it is going to be on the line separating the two media. So it, is, it swims on the line, that is, the line separating the two media. But another light ray which is coming here, right, is such that the angle of incidence of this particular light ray is less than the critical angle. When the angle of incidence of a light ray, when it, travel, it is traveling in one medium, if the angle of incidence is uh, greater than the critical angle, that is greater than the critical angle, then the particular light ray is going to bend back, that is, is going to bounce back to the same medium. So this is what we call total internal reflection. So the complete uh, reflection of a 
light ray in a medium, it is traveling inside the medium itself and if the angle of incidence is greater than a certain angle called as a critical angle, then the phenomenon of total internal reflection happens. So this total internal reflection is the reason for mirages in deserts. In deserts, when a person is traveling in a desert, he can see some water somewhere far away from, uh, the, from his place. But when he goes to that place, he doesn't find any water in that. So this happens when we are traveling in a highway during summers. When you are uh, sitting in your car, traveling in a highway in a summer season, far away you can see some water uh, present on the highway. But when we go to that particular point, we, we do not see any water there. So why this happens? Because due to the total internal reflection of light. Okay, let us go with this. So here, this phenomenon of light is known as interference. You are going to study in your higher classes. So just it's an introduction for you. So this is what we call interference. So here, when a when certain when light rays are coming from a source of light, there is a certain distribution of energy in it. Yeah. You are going to study in your higher classes. I cannot pressurize you. The distribution of energy in those light rays will be to a certain level and will be uniform. So when these light rays are uh, intercepted by another set of light rays, then the superposition of light rays happen. So here for example, uh, we have taken laser light, so we have made two slits here. Two slits means two small, very small narrow openings are called as slits. So these two slits through the slits as the light rays are going to come out. These light rays at this particular point you can see here, they are, these light rays are going to get superimposed. Means they are going to get placed one above the other, that's called superimposing. So as these light rays are going to get uh, superimposed on one another, the energy distribution of one light ray is totally distributed by the energy distribution of another light ray when they are superimposed. So this phenomenon of light we call it as the interference of light. Okay, we will go with the next very important property of light that is diffraction. So here, imagine a very small slit, small slit, a very small narrow opening. So in that small narrow opening, very small narrow opening, when you pass light through that, if you keep a source of light or bulb or something, you can, if you keep a narrow slit in front of that, the light rays pass through that narrow slit and it is going to spread. So if you want to see that property of light, you have to keep the slit very, very, very narrow. So this property of light when it passes through a narrow slit and it gets, gets distributed in all directions, then this property of light is known as uh, diffraction of light. So light spreads out passing through an opening or an edge, that is a narrow slit. So this property is, uh, is uh, which we, we can see that in our nature also. So in clouds, behind the clouds if you have the sun, for example you have clouds here, behind that you have the sun, sun is a luminous body, it is going to give out light, it, or light of its own. So when you have a very narrow slit of uh, some uh, design inside the clouds, the light rays are going to travel through the clouds and they are going to come out, forming a silver lining at the edge of the clouds. You can see a silver lining here, so you can see here. A silver lining. The silver lining which occurs in the clouds is due to the diffraction of light. Okay. So next is very important it is scattering of light. So usually we wonder why the sky appears to be blue in color and we wonder during the sunrise and the sunset the entire sky appears to be red in color and during the afternoons you see that the sky is uh, white in color. So why these things are happening? how the color changes are happening so but that is because due to the scattering of light so when the light comes from the sun as it travels through the earth's atmosphere the molecule atoms and molecules which are present in the earth's atmosphere are going to absorb this light and distribute that light and again again redistribute that light in all different directions so this phenomenon of light is called as scattering of light. So the scattering of light is done by dust particles, atoms, molecules and uh, the water vapors which are present in the atmosphere. All these uh, they scatter the light. So this phenomenon of light is known as scattering of light. So this scattering of light phenomena we are going to study more and more 
uh, as uh, Tyndall effect and Raleigh scattering in the chapter Human Eye and Colorful World in the coming days. Okay. Next is uh, polarization of light. Maybe this is not in your reach, I hope. Uh, consider an electromagnetic wave, as I told you earlier, is made up of uh, two different fields. One is electric field, which will be oscillating like this. Another will be the magnetic field, which will be oscillating like this. So you can see here, both the fields, uh, one is uh, the oscillating like this, another is oscillating like this. So both are oscillating exactly perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So it's an uh, electromagnetic wave. So in this electromagnetic wave, if the electric, electric fields will be oscillating in all possible directions. So if the electric field in a particular electromagnetic wave is oscillating, particularly light, if it is oscillating in all possible directions, then it is called as unpolarized light. Called as unpolarized light. So if the electric field in a light ray, if it is oscillating exactly perpendicular to the uh, direction of propagation and in the same direction, then it is called as polarized light. So where you are going to study in your higher classes, just, uh, just have a clue about it. So no need to go in depth regarding this. So uh, this uh, completes the introduction for uh, the light chapter. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you don't have any notes for this, just some three to four uh, definitions. I'm going to send it through the WhatsApp. You can write down the notes there. Uh, regarding the mathematics and you know, science classes, so every day we'll be running uh, three videos, uh, one after the other. One is uh, mathematics, where, are, where we'll be going with the automatic progressions. Second uh, one will be the physics, where I will be continuing with the light chapter. And the third, third video will be on chemistry where I will be starting with the uh, uh, chemical reactions. So particular chapter I am going to start. So from uh, maybe from, uh, from next two days we are going to get all three videos at once in the morning. Just go through all the videos, subscribe the channel, put a like button on it, right? do the homework. So fantastic uh, problems you are uh, sending me through the WhatsApp are really you are doing well. All the problems what you are sending me are systematically you are doing it as per as I did on the board. I am very happy to see that. So uh, sit and study, don't waste time. Maybe your school and uh, coaching centers are going to start very soon after this once the lockdown is open. So until that, stay safe, stay home and keep learning. Thank you very much.